This is worth bearing in mind when programming with the GPIO. The Raspberry Pi's GPIO has two sets of names. It has its physical names, which is the ones that you'd give it normally. Um, sort of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc, etc, etc. But it's also got the Broadcom names, which is what the chip uses to turn them on. Say I want to turn pin 8 on, this one here. That's I wouldn't be able to write a program that said turn pin 8 on. I'd have to write it with its official name, which is GPIO 14. So I'd have to tell it to send, set pin 14 on, which is the one that we've set in our program here. So now we'll get on with wiring it up. Just bear that in mind. So remember back to when I was explaining how a breadboard works earlier. These, are con these holes are connected horizontally. So, here's my LED. It has a positive and negative side. The positive is the l normally the longer one, and the negative is normally the shorter one. So we're going to need to insert this into the breadboard in different rows. If you insert, it, if you insert both legs into the same row, it won't work. So, different rows. Here it is. And that put your LED in. Now, the shorter leg, which I've, which is the one nearest to me, must go to ground. Ground's just a fancy word for the negative voltage. So I put a resistor in here, and, that, and this is so it's there. And the ground on the Raspberry Pi is pins, physical pin 6, or 3 down on the right side. So I'll connect that with my female jumper wire, taking great care not to connect it to the wrong thing. And connect it here. Now, I find pin 14... Um, on the diagram that I showed you earlier, Th that diagram can be found easily just by googling our Raspberry Pi GPIO pin layout. And so it's just one down from ground, which makes us it makes it a lot easier. So we just put it down onto this one again, making sure you take the greatest care and put it in here. You might see that your LED lights up. That's because maybe that GPIO pins on by default or you've done an earlier program that lit it up and and that program put, kept it on don't worry about that that's not important so once it's all wired up like that nicely turn back to the screen here we are the reason why you can't run your your program from the the Python shell is because that you're not the super user and the GPIO access is restricted to being the super user. So, open up a terminal. Now, this is important. You have to change directory. Basically, change to the file that this has been saved in. So, in Linux, you change directory by typing in the command cd and then the following directory you want to use. So, cd home forward slash oops home forward slash pi slash mtb That's where mine's saved. You press enter and look, my directory address has changed. That depends where you saved yours. So, now, here's, and again, the commands will be below, but type in, to get it to work, sudo, minus capital letters, sudo, python, and then the name of your program. In my case, it's called gpiotest.py. Make sure that you've saved your, your thing as a, as a py file, just because that means that Python can recognize it, and press enter. Now, if we look at our LED down here, 
You're seeing it's flashing. Which, hooray, means we've done it correctly. To stop your program, the default Linux way is just press Control C and I'll come up with a keyboard interrupt thing. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was informative and make sure that if you didn't catch any of the commands they'll be in the description below. Please subscribe and tell your friends about my videos. There will be more videos to come following on from this tutorial on how to get inputs from buttons and potentiometers to controlling motors and, and lots of cool stuff and hopefully we'll be leading up to robot building. So, until next time, bye.